Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and I'm sitting here in my empty science classroom today talking about people, technology, and education. In this video, I want to respond to a video that was created by CGP Gray. It's called Digital Aristotle. If you're not familiar with Mr. Gray's work, he does these amazing videos where he talks you through complex topics using illustrations and humor. Uh, I remember watching one before the last election on the Electoral College and all the scenarios that could come out of that. And so he does amazing work, but this video has a few things that were troubling to me as a teacher, and it also kind of talks to this sentiment I saw at the YouTube Edu Summit, where there's a disconnect between what they're doing and what's really going on in schools. And so I want to talk about that. And so before I can talk about it, you should go watch the video. And so you could do that by clicking on the video up here, and I'll also put a link down in the video's description below. So go watch it, and I'll wait here for you. Okay. I hope you're back and I hope you watch the video. It's funny, um, it's insightful, I think it's pretty fair-handed and so he talks about both sides of the issue. But he is getting at this idea of the idea that technology will revolutionize education. And he even mentions that this has been brought up time and time again. Um, and so what I want to implore you is please can we stop saying that technology alone will revolutionize education. As a teacher, I can see the power of technology, but I really don't think it's going to replace schools and it's not going to replace conventional K-12 education. And here's a few quotes from the video that were troubling to me. Number one, who needs humans when the internet can teach you all of the things? And then number two, schools will be radically different in the future and there will be far fewer teachers working in them doing far less. And while that isn't good news for teachers, it's awesome news for students and society. And so obviously as a teacher that would be a little bit troubling and so the two things that I want to talk about, number one is the idea that we are not Vulcans and then I'll get to number two in just a second. What do I mean by that? Well there's this idea that we can reimagine education. A lot of it goes out of the work of Salman Khan. He started creating this, these walkthrough videos on mathematics but he covers science and now they're covering history uh, and he's also created this amazing ecosystem where students can log into the Khan Academy, they can answer questions and it's being piloted in schools. It was even featured on a 60 Minutes episode. I'll try to put a link to that video down below. And when I was watching it, there was this conflict between, between yeah, this really works and also, whoa, this is scary and I, I don't think this will work at all. And there's one scene where this teacher their school is essentially piloting the Khan Academy and so the students are all working on problems and then she's walking around with her kind of hands behind her back and the narrator is saying, this is great, there will be way less lecturing in the future it'll be way more interaction but the student the teacher just it looks like she doesn't know what to do in the video and so I think that's a little scary and in Mr. Gray's video he constantly has pictures of students just kind of around an iPad or around um, some kind of a laptop and I worry that what we're creating is the school that you see in the most recent Star Trek movie where Spock simply sits in front of a computer screen and it keeps throwing questions at him in physics or philosophy and then he's answering those questions so that's his school day just isolated in a little pod learning and I know as a teacher that this doesn't work last year I tried what you would say more of a conventional flipped classroom and it, it worked okay. There were elements that of, the, of it that were okay. But I felt like this teacher here, isolated from my students. And this year, I've reinserted myself in the classroom because the teacher is the most important part of a functioning classroom. And technology allows us to free up some of that time so we can actually interact with students. Because nobody's going to argue that the that the best way to learn is not a tutoring system where it's one-on-one -on -one learning. There's no better system than that. One person working individually with another one. And also the video kind of makes this idea, this common idea that we can somehow replace K-12 education, that we can do that with computers that can ask us questions, judge where they are. And so think about that. Think about replacing all of your high school education elementary through high school education. Think of replacing all of that. Replacing that crazy science teacher and going to prom and eating lunch with your friends and that shop class and doing sports and all of those things. I mean, how many students is that really going to work for? Our, 
school was lucky enough to be in the state championship football game just the other day and we had a pep assembly where we all the coach implored all the students to come down and we were all cheering together I mean look at that Are, can we replace schools with computers I just don't think that's going to happen and if you if you believe that you have this warped sense of what education is for. Education is about humans. It's about humans interacting. And Mr. Graven talks about this in the video. He talks about going to YouTube headquarters. And he says, I want to thank them. Thanks the people who brought me to California to meet these awesome people. I have more interesting conversations over the space of a few days than I normally get, over it, get to have over the space of a few months. And so he's even talking about when you put engaged people socially interacting at the same point in time, you can get amazing things. And technology simply can't do that. Technology allows us to communicate. You can watch this video where you are, but it's never going to replace you and I or you and a group of people sitting in an area having a conversation. I just don't believe that education can replace that. The second thought I have is the idea that videos are not teachers. And what do I mean by that? Well, this is a comment I got on YouTube just yesterday. Um, basically, and this is, you know, this is a comment that I get every day. And I'm sure if you create a lot of videos on YouTube, you get the same things. Thank you so much. Sideways smiley face. My school sucks. I learned more from this four minute video than I did in a week. And so you constantly get this video feedback from students. And the tendency is to think, well, we just need to replace that student's classroom with a video. If this video is greater, then we could replace that. And that's simply not going to work. We need to replace that student's classroom with a better classroom, with a better teacher. Um, and so I think it speaks to this idea of the difference between what a teacher is and then what a content creator is. And so let me talk to you about my life. I create content for YouTube. So I create videos. I started creating those to use in my classroom. And they're viewed by thousands and thousands of people a day. They've been viewed millions of times by learners around the world. But I'm also a teacher. And so every day I go to school about 7.30. I have students who come in early. I usually give up my lunch to help students. I'm usually with students after school. And so from like 7.30 to 4.30 or 5, every day I'm here working individually with students and in groups. I'm teaching. And there's a big difference between teaching and then just creating content. And at that YouTube Edu Summit, I think they didn't really pick up on the difference between those. Just because you create videos and they're viewed by thousands of people doesn't mean that you're teaching them. And I think we could even have an argument about, you know, how effective are videos? I mean, students, I think, watch them and believe, yeah, I'm smarter now or I get it now. But do they really? I don't think we have a lot of enough studies that show that videos really can move the needle much more than a than a good teacher can. And so I think we really have to watch out when we start calling ourselves teachers because teachers implies learning. And if you're not getting learning, you're not a teacher. You're simply just a talker. And so I think in the video, he talks about these people being the best thing going on in education today. And I do think it's incredibly important. The night that I was at the YouTube Edu Summit, I went home and subscribed to all of these people. Veritasium, this is periodic periodic videos and Vi Hart and this is Smarter Every Day and Hank Green, Sal Khan, this is Minute Physics, this is Vsauce and so I subscribe to all of those and I'm getting amazing content every day and it is making me smarter every day. But these are not teachers. If these are teachers then these are parents. Dr. Spock, Bird, Big Bird, um, Dr. Phil and Mr. Rogers. Like, they're simply content creators. They're making information that is shared by other people and can make you a better parent, just like it could make you a better teacher. But they aren't teachers. They're just creating content. And so I think when we try to replace conventional teachers, thinking teachers, interacting teachers with videos, I think it's a scary road that we want to go down. And when I started doing some research on Digital Aristotle, I found that the project already exists. This is Paul Allen. He was one of the co-founders of Microsoft with Bill Gates. And basically, he's created this project Halo, where they're looking at creating a digital Aristotle, one that could 
judge where a student is, talk to the student, help them through thought processes. Um, the, the name of the company which created Project Halo, I think you would find very interesting, but you'll have to do a little research if you want to find that. And so it's been, you know, not super successful, they might say. You could definitely read and judge for yourself. I think it's a really hard thing to create, and maybe in the future we can. But that's a pretty scary future. What if we can replace this interaction with a machine? Is that something do we want to? I mean, what if we can replace parents with a machine that you're interacting with? I don't think that that's going to happen, and I don't want that to happen, so I'm a little bit scared about that. I like this quote a little bit better from Steve Jobs. The most important thing is a person, a person who incites your curiosity, feeds your curiosity, and machines cannot do that in the same way that people can. And this is a guy who had done more to put machines in schools than almost anybody, but he understands the importance of a good teacher. And that was the most troubling thing at the YouTube Summit. I think they were amazing people incredible amount of creativity in one spot but the most troubling thing is the last session I went to you had a number of these really popular content creators up in the front of the front of the room and the last question that was asked this is just before I left was well these videos are being used in schools have any of you got into schools to see how they're being used and and most of the people said no I don't know why I would do that I don't have time to get into the schools and so I think that's a little scary there's a disconnect between the YouTube and the edu part, because I think our schools are amazing. I don't think our schools are failing. I think my school is pretty darn good, and I think my kids are doing amazing work. And so this is my journey over the last two years. I created a TED Talk last year on how I changed my classroom into a video game. Um, if you want to watch that, I'll put a link down below. But I did end up having some reservations about it, where I felt disconnected from the classroom, disconnected from the students. And this year, I've inserted what's called a blended learning cycle in my classroom. And so I'm definitely using technology, but I'm using more interactions with me and students, just talking and judging where they are where they are as far as the science goes. And so if you want to give a look to those, that'd be awesome. You could also subscribe by clicking on this button, but I'd love feedback. Let me know what you think, um, because that's what education is about. People sharing ideas, and it works best when we're together. And so thanks.